name is Ron Clements. I'm the building official for Chesterfield County, Virginia. We're here at the Spring Hill Suites construction project in Chesterfield. In this video, we're going to give you a little glimpse into what goes into the inspection process to make sure that these buildings are safe and code compliant. Uh, there are many uh, plan reviews and inspections that are involved. This is just a small glimpse into that, but hopefully you'll come away with a better understanding and awareness and what goes into building safety here in Virginia. We hope you enjoy this video. I'm here with Kevin Bercher, one of our plumbing and mechanical inspectors on the commercial side. And Kevin, we're here today inspecting some fire dampers. And can you talk a little bit about what a fire damper is and why it's important to the safety of a building? Well, if there was to be a fire, the damper would shut and keep any fire from going through the ductwork or any smoke going through the ductwork so people would have time to get out. So if there was a fire on one side of the wall and, I, and the people were on the other side of the wall, the wall is going to prevent the fire from getting to the other side and so to keep it from going through the hole created by the duct passing through the wall this damper is going to close yes sir and protect that hole op or that opening yes sir and so what is involved in the actual inspection process so what are you doing we're going to come out on the first inspection and make sure they frame the opening properly then we're going to come back and look at the damper and sleeve installed and the angle on each side and then we'll come back and do an actual damper drop to make sure it functions properly and then on the final inspection, we'll make sure all the ductwork is connected to it correctly. So that's quite a few inspections just on each individual damper. There's about four inspections on each damper, yes, sir. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate your explanation today. I am here with Kevin Four, Deputy Fire Marshal in our Fire Department's Fire and Life Safety Division. Kevin and his team are responsible for all of the fire protection inspections, all of the fire protection systems, uh, such as the sprinkler systems, fire alarm systems, and standpipe systems. And we're here in a stair shaft talking about a standpipe system. So Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about what a standpipe is and, and why it's here and why it's important to the safety of this building? Uh, so a standpipe system is required based on the height of the building. And as you can see here, these are hose connections for the fire department. If we needed to flow a hose or take our hoses and run into the hallways to, to support our attack of fire scene. So each floor will have a hose connection at the intermediate landing so the hose can either be pulled up one level or be pulled down one level. So what are some key things that you look for when you're inspecting these? Uh, so the, the piping is required to hold a 200 PSI hydrostatic test for two hours. Um, this is to make sure that if we do have to supply the piping, um, and we supplied 150 PSI, we need to make sure that the pipe and all its fittings will hold and not break or leak. Um, the hose connections, we check the threads to make sure that the threads used here are also the same type of threads that we have on the apparatus. So Kevin, this is a pretty big piece of equipment. Can you explain what we're looking at here? All right, so this is an electric fire pump um, for, for the project. Um, a lot of misconceptions with the fire pump is that it creates water, it makes water. It does not. It takes the incoming water source that the county is providing and then it just boosts the pressure on it to make sure that the system has adequate pressure for the sprinkler system to work based on the sprinkler design. So what are some key things that you look for when you're inspecting this type of equipment? So, so in the inspection process, and, and I'll drop back on the plan review process as part of the system too, all fire pumps are not, are not on a shelf. They are specifically made to support the job that they're being designed to do. So everyone is built parts, pieces, one at a time for the job. So as we do the plan review process and we see what the sprinkler designer and the engineer are doing, we verify that everything he is doing and what he is proposing is code compliant. Then we get into the inspection processes of it. We, we have to test this fire pump to make sure it can do the, the design job. We test it as what's known as churn, which is zero. Uh, we test it at 100% of its rated capacity, and we test it at 150% of its capacity. Thank you, Kevin. So we're here today in the uh, Spring Hill Suites construction project here in Chesterfield County, and I'm with Gus Pecunia, one of our electrical inspectors. And Gus, tell us a little bit about what you're inspecting here today. Uh, we're in one of the, the actual hotel rooms that uh, uh, somebody would be staying in. Talk a little bit about what you're inspecting to make sure this room's safe for the, for the uh, people that are going to stay here. Right. So in this particular uh, hotel, we have uh, a main panel 
in each of the suites. So our inspections are typically going to start at the main panel and then spider out to the rest of the room. Um, we will be conducting checks to make sure that they have installed the proper wiring, the proper wire size into the panel and to make sure that they've maintained uh, the proper distances for uh, the conductors inside the panel themselves. And then of course then there is the rest of the room. We make sure that there aren't uh, any possible uh, situations where uh, the drywall installers will uh, accidentally damage uh, a wire with a screw while they're doing their installation. This is a, uh, an armored cable product. The connectors are very uh, specific for this kind of cable. Uh, and its armored construction makes it very, very durable and long-lasting. So uh, I assume you're going to be inspecting all of these details to make sure all of this is installed uh, That's correctly. That's right. So it's, it's, it's actually a very detailed inspection you're performing on the electrical side here. It's, it's a absolutely. We, we look at uh, not only the connector itself, but the way it penetrates the, the actual can. What else in a, in a room like this are you looking for? I notice we got a lot of receptacles and-, and other... Right, uh, uh, again, I'll, I'll just bring attention to um, the, the distance uh, the wires remain from the structure that the, the drywall be, will be mounted to. We'll always make sure that the, that the boxes are properly mounted, all the hardware, that everything is fairly rigid. After the drywall is installed here, this is gonna be extremely solid. We're here in the main switchgear room for this entire hotel. This is where all the power comes in and gets distributed throughout the hotel. So Gus, can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking for? This is fairly, I mean, very complicated looking equipment here. Well, uh, it's, it's not really a whole lot different than what someone would find in their home. It's just bigger. And what, what we're really seeing is uh, the power company will make their connections and uh, from the transformer that's outside into this portion of the equipment. Then this, this represents our main breaker for the, all the electricity going to all the other panels in, in the building. And then really what we have is just almost what somebody would find in their, home, in their own homes are uh, circuit breaker panels, except these will be feeding other panels. So what are some of the important things that you look for as an inspector in, in a room like this with this type of equipment? Well, again, we, we run everything uh, back to the drawings and the specifications for the particular project. We'll be looking at the wire sizing and the wiring material, uh, whether the engineer has specified aluminum conductors or copper conductors. So we will be checking everything from the conductor sizes, the grounding sizes, to their attachment points within the equipment themselves. We will also be comparing from the drawings the specifications uh, from the engineer for each individual uh, breaker to make sure that they've installed the correct one uh, with the correct sizing. Uh, and this is all in uh, view of uh, safety for the building itself. Thank you, Gus. Uh, it looks like a whole lot of work to be done in here, so. Yep, there is quite a bit to do in yeah, here. Thanks for what you do. So we're here at the Spring Hill Suites Construction Project. I'm here with Bob Ramsey, uh, one of our commercial uh, structural inspectors. Uh, Bob, why don't you talk about what you're inspecting today here, uh, this wall assembly. It looks pretty uh, elaborate what they've got designed here. Can you talk about this a little bit? Uh, yeah, this, uh, this particular wall is uh, what we call a shear wall. And uh, it's uh, constructed differently than some of the other uh, demising walls that separate the units, unit uh, separation walls. Uh, this one, uh, uh, you may be able to tell, uh, these are some real heavy gauge metal studs. They're, they are structural is what we call them, uh, as opposed to uh, light, light gauge metal framing. These are designed to carry the load of the floor above and, and on, on up. Provide lateral resistance. Lateral so, resistance. So as, yes, as you know, the wind blows against the building, it creates an enormous amount of pressure. Yes, sir. So this helps resist that. I noticed yeah. that it's not just the, the heavy gauge metal studs, but we actually got metal. Yes, you know, sir. Normally we'd have sheetrock, but we actually have metal yeah, here. Yeah, normally, yeah, in, a, in different types of construction, there's different ways to achieve that, that uh, lateral uh, stability. And, and this, the architect has designed this with a, 
uh, sheet steel. So this is really critical because this is helping make sure that this yes. building is structurally sound, yes. it can resist, and a yes. lot of people don't realize we do have seismic activity here, so this isn't just resisting wind loads, yes. it's also resisting seismic loads that might be uh, imposed on this building. It keep the building from doing like a cardboard box when you right. apply pressure on one side. From It keeps it straight and, uh, and from you know any movement. So from an inspection standpoint, what are some, some key things you're looking for? Uh, just to make sure that it's, uh, you might be able to see it, but we have some screws. But it's, it's screwed every, there's a fastening schedule for that. And there's a fastening schedule for these braces. As you can see that there's a good number of screws at each end. So we check that fastening schedule. Also, uh, our, on our initial inspections, we're gonna get, just verify the, uh, the gauge of these gauge. studs. And I assume the location. So you gotta go to the and, plants and find out where the engineers designed yes, yep. these to be in the building, because they're kind of scattered throughout the building. This is a fire rated corridor so that uh, if there was a fire that would uh, occur in one of the guest rooms, you would have a safe way to get out of your guest room down the corridor into an emergency exit. And to do that, we need fire rated construction. So Bob, can you tell us a little bit about what makes these walls fire rated and what you look for to, uh, to make sure they're uh, constructed correctly? Well, these, uh, like you said, these are one hour fire rated walls. and. Uh, they will get a layer of 5 8 sheetrock on both sides. We look at just to kind of like a, any other uh, framing inspection, we look to make sure that the, the studs are uh, uh, spaced according to what's on the plans, uh, that they're the right gauge studs. So there's a, there's a lot involved in doing oh, the yeah. inspection of this single wall. Yes. And it, it, multiple it stages, it, I assume. It, it, it happens in stages. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do the framing and okay them to put the sheetrock up, then we'll look at the sheetrock and then at some point, we'll come back after they've uh, sealed all the penetrations, and we'll look at that again also. Well, let's take a look at a shaft rating. What a shaft is, is that we're going to have holes in our floor uh, that go through multiple stories to run piping or electrical cables or conduits. All kinds of systems may need to run through multiple floors. So we don't want to create a, a, a chimney where we can allow uh, fire and smoke to travel from one floor to the other. So one way to protect that are shaft enclosures. Uh, so, Bob, can you talk a little bit about how this uh, shaft uh, performs that function to, to provide that level of safety for these floor openings? Yeah, um, again, this is a, a UL design. This particular shaft wall is a one inch, uh, what we call core board, and then two layers of 5 8s. I don't know if you can see the two layers there. At some point, they'll complete the shaft on this side. It will be pretty much the same assembly as I see here, but it will just close it all off. Well, thanks, Bob. All right, so I'm here with Nadine Kukarni. He is the architect uh, for the Spring Hill Suites construction project that we've been looking at today. Could you tell us what really goes into making a building like this safe from an architect's perspective? What are some of the critical things that you really work on uh, to make sure the guests here are safe? So it's, it's a combination of uh, a structural components of the building, the penetrations through those components, the separations of the different uh, type of uh, uses within the building. For example, uh, in the hotels, the sleeping area is where we expect to be more secured because the person when he's sleeping, it takes him a little bit of time to wake up and get out of the building. So what we do is we provide the egress path for that person to be able to evacuate that building. I'm here with Anil Patel, chairman of Sina Hospitality, uh, that's going to own and operate this hotel. Uh, Anil, you own and operate a number of hotels and have been involved in construction of a number of hotels. Uh, can you tell us yes. a little bit about what goes in from an owner's perspective to make these buildings safe for your, your guests? Well, so we've been in the business for 20 years uh, in Chesterfield County. Uh, this is our fifth new construction project in Chesterfield County. And uh, so primarily we, we have to make sure that the building is built based on the architectural design and the contractor follow all the IBC regulations that the building is designed for. Uh, you know, from the structural standpoint, from the uh, fire rating standpoint, uh, from the, uh, the fire life safety standpoint. So that's, that's our primary goal, to make sure that the building is designed and built according to those building codes. Particularly this particular building, it's a seven-story 
building with the 5,000 square foot meeting space, so there's a lot of complexity. And that's where we get the expert advice from our contractors, the building officials, and the architect to make sure that, that it does get built according to the codes and meet the safety and, and, and security regulations. So we're here with Sam Heiberger, Senior Vice President for Harlan Construction, that's building the Spring Hill Suites uh, project here today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what goes into making a building like this safe as a contractor? What are you doing to make this the safest building you can for your customers? Sure. Well, our involvement starts ideally as early as possible in uh, design review and constructability between the design team and uh, the jurisdiction that we're working for. Uh, we look for um, practical ways to build to the code compliance and uh, the design of the of the architect. So. We start early by looking through those those documents and those codes, and uh, and then make sure we know how to build it and what the key components are. From what I've seen, the Virginia Building Code is very strong, and uh, you know we've never had any issues with structure, fire protection, or any other uh, major design elements that uh, that we've built in the state. So, you have any idea uh, between our inspectors and special inspectors? all the other quality controls going on about how many inspections total are on a building like this? I mean, <laughs> it, it, can, it can add up. I mean, there are probably hundreds by the time we're done on a building like this. Hello, my name is Ron Clements. I'm the building official for Chesterfield County, Virginia, and I'm here with David Sanders, the construction services manager for Zanino Engineering here in uh, their headquarters in Henrico County, Virginia. Yes. And we're gonna talk a little bit today about special inspections. Uh, the building inspection department at Chesterfield, as well as other inspection departments around the state, uh, have inspection teams that are inspecting the buildings that you're in every day. But there's a body of inspections called special inspections. There's an entire chapter in Virginia's Uniform Statewide Building Code that prescribes these special inspections. These are special because they had to be performed by an engineering firm, a certified engineering firm that has certain specialties and equipment uh, and testing uh, abilities that can test the structural components of the buildings that you're in every day. And we figure this is a part of the inspection process that most people don't even realize takes place. Uh, so David, you want to tell us a little bit about this facility? and uh, Sure. So we are a certified testing firm for soils, uh, concrete, and we also do geotechnical work for the beginning of the project and everything. So you want to tell us a little bit about what we were looking at in here? Sure, no problem. Uh, this part we're actually in right now is actually our concrete lab. Um, so basically once the um, project's going and the concrete shows up on site for being poured in the footings and stuff, we actually take samples of that concrete out of the concrete truck and double check to make sure they meet the standards that were, were set forth in the specifications, uh, submittals and stuff that make sure the right concrete showed up. So when, when the, the engineer that designs the building designs it, uh, they're specifying what strength the concrete is. So would, it, maybe in, in simple terms, if I were to take a, a piece of concrete, I would make a little square, like a one square inch cube yes, of concrete. So if it's 3,000 pounds per square inch concrete, then I can apply a 3,000 pound load to that little square and before it's going to break, to give you an idea. Yep. Um, so it's not just a matter of visual inspections, which you may think of a building inspector walking through the building looking at things visually, which we do and uh, their firm does as well, but this is the next step. This is not just looking at something visually, this is taking these uh, building components and bringing them back here to test them to make sure what's going in that building is what it was designed uh, to be and can uh, provide the performance necessary to meet the code and to make that building safe for That's the occupants. Correct. And one other thing too is why we're out there on the job site when the concrete truck does show up, we actually do field tests to make sure it is within the specifications. We check the slump, uh, flowability of the concrete. We check the air because some concrete does need air in it. That way it expands and contracts like a sidewalk or exposed wall or something. And we also look at you know, weights and stuff of the concrete to make sure it does match with the design of what the concrete is supposed to be for. So it's, it's actually kind of a layered approach Very to where so. we've got, we got field testing uh, this happening right there as the truck is providing the concrete and then we're taking samples back for, to find out the final uh, strength of the concrete once it fully cures. So. Yes, sir. And
here with Josh Spacek. He's the residential manager uh, for Zanino Engineering. And he's gonna talk a little bit about what we do or what he does to provide the soils analysis necessary to design buildings. So before building is even designed, we need to know a lot of information about the soil. Uh, a geotechnical analysis is performed and that's for residential and commercial. Uh, so Josh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what goes into putting together a geotechnical report to, for an engineer to use to design a building? Yes, sir. So before the county can approve the plans for the footing and foundation for a building, we'll come out and conduct some soil testing to determine the natural density of the soil as well as its shrink swell potential. Uh, to do that, we use tools like this. This is a hand auger to dig down to the approximate depth of the footing and get samples of the material in its natural state. From there, we'll use this piece of equipment. It's called a DCP, which is a dynamic cone penetrometer. Uh, using this hammer and dropping it, counting the blows in segments of an inch and three quarters, we can determine the natural density of the soil. And that'll let us know how much weight the soil can bear. Uh, once that information is all put together, then what happens? What happens is we'll get it to our lab, these soils, and we'll test them for their shrink swell potential and their classification. Once we have all of our empirical data, we'll turn that over to a licensed engineer who will generate a report and give a footing design and foundation recommendations. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. With Gregory Cox, the laboratory manager for Zanino Engineering, and you're here in the soils laboratory. Is that where we are right now? We're in the soils lab. This is lab number one, and uh, lab number two is the bigger room out there. So can you tell us a little bit about what happens here? What are you testing the soil for? How does this help design buildings and make buildings safe for our, our citizens? Absolutely. It's probably the most important part of the building process. Everything is built on some type of soil or aggregate, and it's important that you are building on the proper type of soils or aggregates because it supports the entire structure. And during the building phase, it's also used for a lot of backfill and compaction. It's also under every roadway, every parking lot, every building, every house, every footing is all bearing on some type of soil. So what we do back here in the soil lab is really the second part of any job after you drill or do a geotechnical study. Then we come in here and we actually run the various tests on the soil. For residential, we're looking for shrink swell potential. Tell us a little bit about shrink swell. Why, why is that a, a, a concern for a building's foundation system? Well, it is a concern because if the soil shrinks or swells too much, that's going to cause the footing to crack or the foundation to crack. And um, to combat that, you would design the footing maybe you know a little bit thicker, a little bit wider. Nothing progresses until after the soil testing is done. And basically everything is designed based on the results of the soil testing. For larger commercial projects, what are some of the things that you're, you're looking for uh, to provide the engineers? Well, we're looking for the same things, but we also, um, we would run a lot of proctors and CBRs also. Proctors you, yeah, are another type of test where we basically compact soil or aggregate in the lab at different moisture contents and we determine what the optimum moisture is for that particular material and what the uh, optimum density or weight of that soil would be. You mentioned CBR, California bearing ratios, is that correct? What, and so what That's tell right. us a little bit about that. Well the CBR is used for structures that are going to support traffic usually, parking lots, roadways, and um, it's basically a different test. It's similar to a proctor in that you compact it. After it's compacted and weighed, it will soak for 96 hours, and then we penetrate it with this CBR press. And um, the dial gauge up there will give us readings on how much resistance the soil is offering and it allows us to determine how well that particular material will support the layer of material going on top of it, some type of sub-base which will then support asphalt, but the soil underneath the asphalt and the stone is supporting it all. 
So it's very important that you uh, know your CBR value. Well, this is all quite fascinating. Thank you for spending some time to tell us a little bit about what goes on here in the soils lab and what goes into making our building safe. You're very welcome. Thank you. Here with Craig Condry, he's the Chief of Commercial Inspections for Chesterfield. So Craig's responsible for pretty much everything that happens on a commercial job site. He manages the inspectors, the inspection process, and of course he and his uh, team work closely with David and his team with Zanino and similar engineering firms. So could you guys talk a little bit about the relationship and how that works? How do you coordinate each other's activity on the job site? How do you help each other out? Yeah, so we'll meet with uh, Dave and his, his uh, staff, and we can talk about anything. They can ask particular questions about the job, specific questions uh, about that particular job. And then as the job progresses, uh, we're on the site with our inspection staff is on the site. Uh, Dave's inspection staff is also on the site. Yes, yeah, so we also like a lot of times, um, special inspections and county inspections do overlap. So you do actually need the county inspection inspector to pass their part of it. But we also look at the same thing too to make sure we pass our part and all parts are together uh, per the plans. Yeah, the building code has specific inspections that we're, we're required to make. Uh, we make a lot more inspections than what the, what the code actually uh, requires us to make. And, and that's part of that whole process. We do duplicate some inspections from time to time, but we're always making sure that we know what he's looked at and he knows what we've looked at. Well, as you have seen, a lot goes into making buildings safe here in Virginia. There are many departments involved. The contractors, the architects, the engineers, the building owners all play a role in making sure these buildings are safe. We hope you've enjoyed this video and have a better understanding and awareness of what goes into building safety here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you. Thank you.